<laughs> Hello. Perhaps you have heard of the Hindu parable of the six blind men who pay a visit to the elephant in an effort to define what this creature is really like. Now, one of the blind men has a different perspective, feels a different portion of the elephant's anatomy than the other blind men, and they all have different resulting pictures of who or what this creature really is. Now, this Hindu parable is often used to try to undercut or defeat the claim, any religious claim of exclusivity. And hi, I'm Adam Zenz. I'm a religion student here at Liberty University in Lynchburg, Virginia. And I live in Wisconsin. And I'm also an online site moderator for DebateGod.org. Now, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about um, how to become a Christian apologist. An apologist would be someone who would take that parable in an effort to show that it does not defeat the claims of Christianity, that Jesus Christ is the only way to God the Father. Now, um, first of all, a few terms. Uh, what is apologetics? Apologetics has to do with presenting a well-reasoned case for the Christian faith. It can be personal testimony to more abstract arguments, like the ontological argument. Um, apologetics often tackles worldview issues. Um, we read in 1 Peter 3.15, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks a reason of the hope that lies within you with meekness and fear. Now, worldviews have a lot to do with how we think and also how we behave in the world. According to Donald Albin Jr., author of Created for Connection, a worldview expresses a person's most basic assumptions about life and includes beliefs about human nature, human origin, human purpose, and human destiny. So how does one become, go about becoming a Christian apologist? Well, according to J.P. Holding, who has an online ministry and has written several books about defending the Christian faith, he writes in an apologetic for apologetics in cyberspace published in the Christian Research Journal that one does not need a bunch of educational credentials to get involved in an apologetics ministry. For one thing, you can start a website or a blog site and begin an outreach right away. Um, you can also start a YouTube channel and you have an immediate worldwide audience. Um, however, if you want um, to become a more a polished or professional apologist, this generally would require obtaining an advanced degree in either philosophy or systematic theology. So why the need for Christian apologetics? Well, according to a 1994 poll survey, there's 62 percent of believers who don't subscribe to the idea of absolute truth. So these are Christian believers who don't even know necessarily the reasons why they believe in the Christian faith. Um, that's from Apologetics for the Church, Why Christians Are Losing the Culture War by Chuck Colson. And then also, um, Sean McDowell addressing the same issue in Apologetics for a New Generation, also published in the Christian Research Journal, talks about young people who are leaving the church and they're leaving the faith behind because the Christian church is not really addressing their minds and their hearts. So it's dealing with heart issues and psychology, but it's not really tackling the deeper reasons of the Christian faith. So. In sum, we have um, a need for apologists, Christians apologists, to stand up and to be called out and to start ministries. And it does not require a lot of a special training, um, although you can go that route. And there is a, an immediate um, captive worldwide audience who want to hear why you believe the way that you do as a Christian. Well, thank you for listening and have a good day. That was excellent. Oh, that excellent. Was good. good remake. Good remake. <laughs>